you're gonna come with me on my first day back with the Federal Express personal vehicle program on this segment of the Geek Geezer. If this is your first time taking out the Gig Geezer, if you're a returning visitor of the Gig Geezer, hey, thanks for coming by. And if you would not mind, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I feel a bit disheveled and a bit out of out of um, out of sync right now. Um, this today is Sunday, November 13, 2022. And this is my first day back doing Federal Express personal vehicle program. Um, it's a seasonal opportunity for people who look to make some extra money. This is my third season doing um, Federal Express personal vehicle program. Uh, the first, How I first became familiar with it is that um, back in the fall of 2020, I happened to run into uh, a lady whom I knew from my Amazon Flex days. I happened to notice her vehicle. Um, I noticed she had a Federal Express. Um, um, she had a Federal Express vehicle magnet on her vehicle, and um, I went by. I, I actually passed her, went back, and I'm like, "Hey, what's going?" And so we got to talking, and she told me about doing um, Federal Express. Um, she she felt the money was better. Uh, than Amazon Flex, and um, I told her I, I'd be interested, and so she told me, she said that she would put in a word for me, and that's how I got on. Um, last year, I wasn't on long because, quite frankly, I kind of uh, got out of it because of gas prices. It's not, it's not to say that gas prices are no different than they are last year. In fact, gas prices are probably about 50 cent more than they were this time last year. But I'm just at a point where I'm looking to mix things up. Um, I, I get tired of uh, dealing with all the histrionics and machinations of working the DoorDash app, Grubhub app, Uber Eats app, Instacart app. Um, I, get, I get tired of the poor customer ratings or less than desirable customer ratings from these ungrateful, inveterate people who, for whatever reason, will trash you uh, for reasons unknown. It is what it is. Um, and while I have done well, as I have doc well documented here on uh, the Gig Geezer channel, um, again, I just, I'm, I'm open to diversify things. I'm open to try to e explore means by which I can um, execute an end game from depending almost, well, 90% of my money that I make comes from the gig economy. Now, yes, I've described that I am a a licensed insurance agent. I have my own agency, have my own office, which I've shown. Um, but, and as I've also um, shared a number of times, insurance money, while if you write enough business, um, if you write enough business, more than likely you're going to kind of anticipate a certain amount every month. But there are the possibilities by which um, if something gets snagged in the process, you will miss that commission cycle and then you'd have to wait another month or two months before you see that money. Well, as I shared in my case this year, it was in upwards of five months before I saw certain commission monies come in. Now, if I had been depending 90% of my money on insurance money, I probably would not have put up this um, thumbnail here about how my credit had improved by more than 200, by over 200 points now. Um, since 2018 so the gig economy has put me in a position and I and has put me in a position to where things are um, way better than they were um, just less than five years ago but anyway um, I know that I've kind of set things up but yes I am in the midst now of going to my first stop of apparently about 125 <laughs> um, now I did mention how I started um, 2022. Now, I really had no thought of coming back with um, Federal Express, but last week I happened to be uh, picking up an order at a McAllister's, 
and I noticed this guy outside, and I'm like, he looks familiar, that's a, and, and then we, we, you know, our eyes met, and I was like, hey, what's going on, man, I'd see you, and, and so we got to talking and so forth, he's like, yeah, you know, hey, are you, I got my own, I got my own gig now, and uh, I'm looking for drivers, and I'd sure love for you to come back, and I'm like, you know what, I, I'm open for it, he asked me about my shoulder, and I told him, it's, it's doing better, it's been up and down this year, um, I didn't share with him that I hadn't picked up a bowling ball yet in over a year, but my shoulder is on the improve again. Um, and so um, he he sent me, he, he emailed me some um, links that I needed to um, check into. And since I've, long, I've been in the system now for, what, two years, um, I was cleared by like Thursday, I believe it was. I was cleared by Thursday to resume doing um, Federal Express on a contracted basis. Now, this guy worked for another, um, he actually was an employee of another um, contractor, but uh, apparently over the past year, he has since started his own um, business and he is now a contractor with Federal Express. And so those of us who do the uh, personal vehicle program typically are contracted people who um, these people will take out your taxes, but we get the claim to miles and we can work anytime we want. Now, with him um, starting me out with 125 stops or about, I think it's parcels more so than stops, but I am delivering like about 100, 125 parcels. So I'm getting the max money um, in that um, I'll be making $150 today. It's We're paid on a per diem basis. And so, um, um, and I will see my first check deposit in my uh, account, not this Friday, but the following Friday. The one thing that I've, I've always been somewhat ambivalent about Federal Express is that gig economy, gig delivery money like DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, I can cash out every day. In fact, I can, yeah, I can cash out every day. And that helps me in managing my responsibilities. With this money though, this is money that I have to, in my budgeting, I have to project 10 days down the road, but knowing that it's coming along. So then I have to figure out how soon, how many days a week do I really want to do this? Because if I were to do this like five days a week, that means that half of my money is gonna be deferred in a sense until the following week. And then I gotta, I've got to kind of navigate through things until that big clump of money comes. Now, I mentioned about uh, them taking out taxes. Now, as a 1099, a pure 1099 as myself, it helps to show some taxes taken out, although I have a lot of legitimate um, uh, deductions. But I'm going to get back with you because i got to put myself in a position now to drop off my first set of orders. I've got like 10 stops up here to my right, and then I've got a gazillion, I've got um, at least 40 stops in back, and then the remaining stops are in the bed of the truck. Now, admittedly, I did not set things up right. I really didn't. And so I'm gonna probably pay the price today. Hopefully, I can get this done in about five hours. That is the goal. Um, if I'm able to get it done anywhere close to five hours, it's a win today. Okay. I am not quite an hour into this um, route, and I'm having to, I guess, get up to speed as I go, <laughs> and that's kind of expected. Um, already, I have, I got to a drop-off location, and I thought I had the parcel, and apparently I don't have the parcel. Um, hopefully, I left. Hopefully, I left it at the yard, or it just was never one of the art. Um, 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 items that was in my uh, in my batch in my uh, route today, and that happens sometimes. It, it, there's one that supposedly is in your in your route, but then again, it's not on your route, and then you just have to go on. But I spent a good five minutes searching in back, making sure that I did not place it somewhere else. The worst thing you want to do is set up your route. The worst thing you want to do is set up your route and have to go back and go back into all your stuff. So um, one thing I noticed with the um, scanner that I'm using this time around, this is a completely different scanner 
than the one that I used uh, the previous two years. In fact, um, this one, this one is um, much better. In fact, it allows you to take a picture of the actual drop-off um, as documentation. Um, la the, la the previous two scanners that I used, the previous set of scanners that I used were the same ones, um, but it is, it, is, it is what it is. I mean, Federal Express is a multi-billion dollar company, and so they invest well for um, the people who do business with them and for them. So I'm actually about to drop off this next order. Um, this I'm about to drop off this next parcel. And ironically, I dropped off to this person last night. I forget the actual order that, oh, it was a Grubhub order from a place called Full Viet. And um, it paid $13.59 and I was probably about 20 minutes late. But that was because I'd stacked an order, on, uh, a DoorDash order on top of it. And um, the order was not actually ready when I got there. So, um, that said, um, it turned out to be a about a thirty-four dollar um, play in which thirteen fifty-nine on top of twenty dollars. And in fact, here, uh, well, actually, I don't have a, um, the the screenshots of either order. I, but um, I'm about to drop off this order and get back in. Um, I am now about to. I'm approaching now my second hour into this route, and I will have knocked off 17 stops um, on this. So that means from the first to the second now, I've improved to 17. Um, this second one included, uh, as I probably mentioned in the previous um, in the previous report, I had, I had a trailer park and an apartment complex. Now I'm about to go into a gated community. Um, so I, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna be able to pick up some, some uh, time on this on these um, particular round of stops here, um, but hopefully I will at least continue to get some kind of rhythm. Now, the hard, the hardest thing for me is that, as I've already shared, I am, I am doing this all on the fly, um, trying to. Of course, I spent time trying to um, sort out my route, at least put, positioning it, or organizing it in my vehicle. Then it, it, it's been getting familiar with the scanner and also the accompanying um, manifest uh, app. Now, it used to be that um, the guy I dealt with, he would print out a manifest and then I would kind of do things that way um, in which I would kind of plot out my route and all according to the paper manifest. Now it's on software and I'm having to, uh, for lack of better words, trying to coordinate the software with the manifest and also the scanner. That's not really been the hard. That's not really been a hard thing. It's just been um, just getting getting in my mind working both the software for the manifest and then this scanner here. And so, um, as I've shared before, um, I think sometimes you have to think. I, I believe that you have to be thinking two, three, four, five stops ahead, and that is true. And so that's part of my finding this rhythm is that me having to now position my packages three, four, five stops ahead. And so that's going to also help me pick up time. Now, it's going to be a very kind of, it's going to be a grind and it's going to be a slow um, improvement that I'll probably see as I'm doing this. But um, it, I'm, I'm prob it's probably going to take me about two more routes completed before I before I even begin to say that I'm in some type of mid-season form. So I'll get back with you in the next hour. Well, I am three hours into this fucking debacle. I have completed 36 stops out of, I'm, I'm about 30% done, I think. Yeah, somewhere around 30% completed with this entire route. And, um, well, this last hour, I had a couple of uh, stops in which I had to um, leave stickers, letting, them, letting the, the recipient know that uh, you weren't here when I came by. And then I had another fucking apartment complex. And I had to, of course, situate my um, parcels again for the next round of uh, stops. But 
the situation of parcels for the next round of stops is not as time consuming as it sounds. The time consuming part is when uh, people are not there where you have to get signatures and then you have to go through the process of using these using these um, forms here that you may see sometimes on your door when you're not there. Um, that takes time. And it's like you have to enter in twice the, the, um, the code number in order for it to go through. But I'm about to drop off stop number 37 in a few seconds and I'll get back with you in about an hour again. All right. We're checking in at four hours now. I'm still in this shit four hours and I'm probably about 40% done. And you're saying, geezer, what in the fuck did you get yourself into? I'm asking myself the same thing. I mean, four hours, I've completed 52 stops. No, 48 stops. And so we're talking basically a third, maybe to 40% done. I think it's close to about 40% though. But I'm like, what in the fuck I got myself into, man? I mean, and it's not like I'm slow. That's the thing. I am not a slow worker, man. But this 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 first day, chalk it up to the game, man. I'm getting fucking piss poor gas mileage. Predictably, I'm averaging about 14 miles to a gallon. Oh shit. I mean, y'all gonna have a field day on this bad boy. I mean, at the rate I'm going, it's gonna be. I mean, I don't even want to talk about it though. But uh, I'll get back with you an hour later. Okay, we are right at about five hours into this fucking route from hell. Um, I've completed about 60 stops, right at about 60 stops, if not at 60 stops. So I've continued at this 12 stop pace per hour. And I, quite honestly, I can't say that it's me, man. I mean, what I'm finding out is that there are some parcels that were on my I, on my manifest that were actually um, routed to another uh, another driver. And there's been three of those. There's been three of them in which um, nobody was there. And I just dropped off to an apartment place that is probably one of the worst scenarios that you can go to. It's an older apartment building. And you can't, like with a lot of newer places, there's, a, there's somewhat of a visible sign outside of the building and let you know that you're at building one, two, or so on and so forth. At least a lot of the newer places. This one, the building number is etched into the uh, masonry. And so, for example, if you're looking for apartment D3, you've got to look for um, the etched sign that has one D in the middle and then four. And apartment three is going to be upstairs. I kid you not. Um, that's the way that one worked. But the thing is, if you're at nighttime, you've got to find a you got to find building D, and there's nothing that's going to help you to find building D. For me, it was a good thing that it was daytime, and the fact that I've delivered there in previous capacities, like a DoorDash, Grubhub, and Amazon Flex. In fact, that's what's helping me now. The fact that I've delivered through Amazon Flex and the food delivery apps. That is what's that's what's keeping me going. But the one thing that's going to help me out and get me out of this shit today, it's going to be the fact that the scanner is dying. It's at about 35%. And so I'm guessing that it's got a good, probably a good hour or so life left in it. So when that scanner gets down to a certain percentage, I'm heading back to the warehouse with all these fucking things. And that's it. That's it. I got an email, I've already gotten a text message from the contractor himself already indicating that, hey, look, um, get, within the next hour, take bring everything back to the uh, warehouse. He apologized for the route that he gave me, knowing that um, whenever you do a Columbia, a Columbia route, uh, actually route that's, and a Columbia route that involves downtown, it's typically a mess. And this route is actually, broader than what it actually appeared on the map. Um, ideally, when you have a lot of stops, you want to have a lot of, you want to have them really tight where you have stops that are like, almost like the next house, the next house, the next house, the next block, the next block, the next street, as opposed to what I've done is traversing 
several zip codes in the process. I've traversed um, 29204, 29206, 29205, um, multiple, multiple zip codes, um, and that's not good um, when, you're, when you're trying to do routes. Uh, that was a problem with uh, Amazon Flex, uh, what seemed to be a very common thing that I would get. And with Amazon Flex, though, you have a time limit, though. The good thing about uh, Federal Express, you don't have a time limit, but ideally, they still would like for you to um, average somewhere around 20 stops per hour, 20 to 25 stops per hour. But when they, but fortunately, um, the contractor, the guy who brought me on, he also understands, um, he, he did it himself. He's done stuff like this himself. He's done routes. And so he knows what I'm dealing with. And a uh, situation like this, you take it, you charge it to the game. You take your ass whooping, you, you take the loss and you try to do better the next time. And that's where I'm at. So the next time I come back, it'll be from the gig studio to wrap this up. I'll also wrap up what little um, um, gig delivery, gig food delivery um, that I'll be doing. I know that I've made 150 already doing this. The goal is just to get over $200 and call it a day. And with that, um, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer or in any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hey, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. Next time from the Gig Studio. Well, we're back in the Gig Studio, and um, I that route um, was definitely one of the worst, as I shared in the actual segment, that I ever had in my gig delivery experience. Now, just to wrap things up, I may be repeating myself, though, but I may be repeating myself, but it bears worth repeating. When you have, when you're doing deliveries, those of you who've never done like um, Amazon Flex or a personal pro vehicle program with UPS or even um, Federal Express, or for that matter, um, even Roadie, when you have a high volume of stops, Typically, the route is set up to where it's in a very tightly, um, tightly concentrated area because of the many stops. This route spanned three zip codes and spanned a much larger area. And it had me thinking that I'm not I'm not up to speed with what I'm doing. But as I found out um, when I returned to the warehouse, there was another driver who went out um, earlier, who went out at the same time I did from the warehouse. And she was she's also a seasoned driver. And we both, as we got to talking, <laughs> we both experienced the same type of thoughts and emotions while out there on route. And so come to find out, we we were not we were not fucking up. We were not slow as what we thought. The, 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 we were going about as fast as we probably could, given the route that we had. In fact, she worked an even wider area than I did. Um, she completed like seven. She completed in the seventies. The um, in terms of her stops, of course, I completed in the eighties in my stops. And so, um, it was a it was an interesting experience. Yeah, I made one hundred fifty dollars yesterday, and it took me um, about. Uh, seven, 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 about seven hours, a little over seven hours from start to returning to the warehouse. Um, that was not, <laughs> that was not, um, what I had drawn up. Um, not at all, not at all. In fact, uh, that kind of had a drag on my week in terms of my hourly average in which I posted on the community board that I put in 45 hours last week, having made over 14, having made just a tick over $1,450 last week, which ended uh, yesterday, November 14, 2022. Now, um, she also told me, the, the driver told me that when she had a similar route of similar volume, it was actually come to find out that's not our the area that we drove Larry the area that we attempted the deliveries is not the area that we actually do are uh, um, where um, our contractor has his routes the routes that he actually um, 
ha, are, has negotiated, he negotiated with Federal Express Ground to do. Um, she told me that when she had a route just the, the, the previous time of similar volume, she was done in like four hours. And so that tells me then that if the routes are correct in terms of um, area that we're supposed to cover, we should be able to do somewhere in that 20 to 25 um, stop range per hour, if not a little more. So um, that was a little bit of consolation from yesterday, but it certainly didn't help me as I went through the as I went through the route. So um, chalk it up to the game, chalk it up for experience, take the loss. And well, will I go back out there again? probably um hopefully i'll get much better gas mileage next time normally when the routes are correct um i my gas mileage in the truck at least what i recall from last year got down to about 17 18 miles to a gallon and then when i got away from doing the route i would get it back up into that 20 mile mile per gallon range so um with it dropping down to 12 and a half 12 and a half um miles per gallon definitely an aberration but that's all I have for this segment of the Gig Geezer. If you like the content that's been provided in this segment or in any other segment, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up. Share my content among others. And I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I'm Inwood Lane. And as always, may your hustle and may your grind continue.